Okay, hello everyone and welcome back to another Photoshop or digital art tutorial and lesson with myself, Nathan Hawthorne. So today what I want to look at is our tools. So that's the set of little buttons here on the left side of your Photoshop window. Okay, so what you'll find is that depending on what you do, and what you use Photoshop for, you won't actually use all of these. And to be honest, there are certain ones which I don't actually know what they're useful for because I just don't use them. But I'm going to go through the ones which are most important, especially for me as an artist, and that will be most important for you guys who are coming up through digital art as well. Um, those of you in graphic design and photography will also find these super useful because, of course, our subjects in, in, interconnect and overlap. So, we'll start off here at the top. This is the Move tool. So. If I just scroll something down, we can move this about using that move tool. One thing that you'll find about every single one of these buttons is that if you click and hold them, a window will appear. Now, unfortunately for, for um, us, uh, OBS, which is what I'm using to record this, doesn't seem to actually allow those pop-ups to show, but they're there, you just click and hold. And as you can see, I could change it to an artboard tool as well. I don't know what that does. I've never seen it before. Oh gosh. Oh. Oh gosh, I did not expect that. All right, so we'll jump back to our move tool. Um, for those of you that are wondering, I'm using Photoshop 2021. So that's a brand new one, um, just updated, just released. Our next tool, I'm going to go sideways over to the rectangular marquee tool. All right, this is used for selecting stuff. So I don't know why I rubbed that out. So I'm just gonna bring that back. Now, with this, you can select areas and then everything that you do within that area. So let me just build another layer. That'll make it a bit easier. And then everything that you do within that area will be affected by whatever button or filter or process that you're doing after that. So say, for example, if I now press backspace, it will remove everything within that area. So it's a selection tool. All right. We then press Control D to deselect that. Alternatively, just go to select and then deselect there. Okay, so that's the move tool and the rectangular marquee tool. If you click and hold that rectangular marquee tool, you also get the elliptical marquee tool. You also get, let me just bring that back. You also get the single row marquee tool, which basically just allows you to select in a line and also the single column, which is the other way around. All right. Out of all of these, I think the rectangular marquee tool is the one I use the most, especially since I work with comics, where I can basically select squares and do with them what I want, or only work within that area if I'm doing something like coloring or shading. With that is also the fact that if you hold shift while, do it while making your selection, then it stays as a regular square. Okay, so the proportions stay the same. Very useful knowledge, especially if you want to keep things nice and even. So that's the marquee tool, the selection tool. We've also got the lasso, which is a similar thing. But with this one, you're free to choose whatever shape you want. And then that's the area that you're selecting. See? Control D to deselect that. I'm just going to go back in. Now with the lasso tool, if you click and hold on that, you can also get the polygonal lasso tool. As you can see, this works only in straight lines. This too is something that I use a lot as a comic artist because I of course have some panels which are not straight, um, regular rectangles. They do have slanted um, imagery. So I might have a, um, I might have a box that's like that shape where it's got a lean on that side, polygonal tool. I can use it like that and then all of a sudden I can draw only in that box and it's all good. Can't go out. Super duper useful. We've also got the magnetic lasso tool. Which uh, is attracted to the corners of things, makes it super easy to select because it like picks up the fact that there are you know, outlines and things happening. Very, very useful, especially when doing color work or 
moving people in an in a photograph if you want to move them about and select just them not the background very very useful so let me just deselect that all right let's lay down that color again just so we can see what we're actually messing about with our next tool is the magic wand tool all right this allows you to um, quickly select areas uh, and it tends to use things which have a similar color or tone or texture so for example if I was to put down let me just pick a few more colors we'll get some red in here well this is more of a sort of pinkish color and we'll get some blue in here now if I use the magic select tool or the magic one tool notice how it only picks up the blue there it only picks up the purple there and it will only pick up the green there see very very useful especially if you're removing things like backgrounds very quickly or you want to make edits just to a certain color make them a little bit darker make them a little bit lighter all right very very useful for that along with that if you click and hold on that you'll get the quick selection tool which is very similar um, but it allows you to select multiple areas rather than just the one as long as you're pressing on that area moving on to our next tool which is the crop tool now we're familiar with this because you would have used it in things such as Microsoft Word if you're a student so you would have used it to reduce the size of pictures or crop out things that you don't need it works in exactly the same way you can literally just reduce the size of your canvas the entire canvas and it doesn't matter what layer you want it will do it to all layers in the document eyedropper tool super duper 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 useful this tool allows you to basically eye drop any pick up any color that's already there or that's in the image and it puts it into your um, into your palette down here at the bottom left so say for example you want to match a color exactly from another image you just open that file pick it with the color picker and then go back to your brush and there you go it's right there super duper 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 useful healing brush the spot healing brush or the, the healing tool for this one this actually uses the information around an area and basically applies it to the area which you press on to kill spots or mistakes very useful for if you're fit um, photo editing and you want to make corrections to um, someone's face <laughs> I guess if you want to correct their face so if they've got a spot or a blemish that you don't want or if there's a piece of hair out of place you can use this so for example here we've got this green spot here maybe I want to remove it to make it all purple just go over that there you go it used the purple around and fill that in all right that's for the spot healing brush tool next is our brush tool our main tool the B button for pretty much everybody the brush tool is the one that allows us to Put down all these marks and of course with the brush tool we can we get all the different variations and i've had a video which explains how to make brushes how to use brushes how to download brushes and i'll link that in the um, cards above but brushes are literally the foundation of what we do as digital artists so you know the brush tool is your friend and understanding how it works and how to modify it using um, all of photoshop's different options that's super duper imperative and important okay but for the basics all you need to know is that this is the brush tool um, the shortcut for it is B up at the top you'll be able to change um, the shape size and the way that it reacts with that preset ones and you will also be able to change the size of it as well all right um, the size of it and the opacity of it to change the size very quickly use your square brackets and it will change so that's the brush tool clone stamp tool and pattern stamp tool basically just allow you to select areas by pressing alt click and then you can just repeat that area anywhere that you want okay um, can be useful for things like backgrounds or clothing but as an artist I don't really use it much and then the eraser tool, number two in your set of super important um, tools. 
So you have the brush tool and then you have the eraser tool, which is normally assigned with the shortcut E. It works exactly the same as the brush, apart from it removes information and imagery instead of putting it in. All right, so it works exactly the same way. You can shrink the brush with the square bracket, grow it with the square bracket. You can change the way that the brush affects the page. Is it soft? Is it harsh? Is it in a pattern? All that is modifiable using all the different options. You just got to play with it and figure it out. But this should definitely be assigned to one of your shortcuts if you're using a tablet because your brush and your eraser tool are so important. Our next tool, the fill tool, uh, which also doubles as the gradient tool. So for filling or the paint bucket tool, literally all it does is use areas which seem to be all together and it allows you to just fill them in, just like that. Nice and simple, just like we did on paint back when we were younger. Now, if you want to do the gradient tool, this just allows you to use the two colors that are down here, down here um, in your palettes, I guess, and they use those to create a gradient, just like so. And the good thing about the gradient tool is that you can change the pattern of it. So if you want something a bit more radial, you can do that. If you want a bar, you can do that. If you want something a bit more like a star sort of shape, you could do that or like that. There's so many different things that you can do with this and you could shape mess with the opacity. This is super useful. You might have seen a lot of artists use this for doing their um, comic art when they do when they add color and tone. I don't personally use it for that, but I know that a lot of artists do and a lot of colorists do. Okay, so that's the gradient and the paint bucket tool. They're both in one. You just have to press and hold to get those two different tools. Our next tool is the smudge tool. Now, I never used to use this originally, but I use it quite a lot now because it helps me to blend the skin on my characters when I'm doing character art. And all it does is it literally just, it smudges, <laughs> simply put. It smudges and how it smudges is dependent on the type of brush um, that you're using with it. Mm -hmm. So once again, everything that, you, that you're familiar with, with the brush and with the erasers and all your save presets and stuff, those can be applied to your smudge tool as well. And yeah, so if you want a soft smudge, you can do that. If you want a pattern smudge, you can do that too. So it's up to you to mess around with it and see what works best with your style. You can also vary the strength of it. But one thing I will say is that when you, the strength is very high and if your brush is quite big, it will, it's taxing on your computer. It can, that's when your Photoshop can start to lag and uh, even risk crashing. With that is also the blur tool, um, which it just blurs stuff. It's, it's, it's a bit like a weaker version of the smudge tool from what, I, from what I've seen. Our next tool is the dodge tool. Now, th all this does is increase saturation. Now, I've been planning a video on saturation, but there's a whole lot of science to it, so I'm still sort of looking into it, but um, it increases saturation. And saturation is just increasing the exposure, basically, making the warmer, brighter colors more enhanced. So as you can see here, as I increase that saturation, it's starting to white out. Uh, combined with that, if you press a little bit harder on the tool, you can select the burn tool, which does the opposite. It burns the colors, making them darker. Next is the text tool. Super duper important. I, of course, use it for when I'm doing my front covers, for when I'm adding text to my comments and stuff like that. Um, you can do it either horizontally. Let me just enlarge the color and size. Oops. There we go. And there's loads of options which come with this as well. Um, you just have to mess around with it. You can skew them, you can change the space in between the, um, the letters, all of that you can do. So it's up to you to mess around with and play with. But text is just text. I'm sure you're familiar with it. Although what you can do is up to you to play with them and understand because honestly there's loads that you can do with the text and the hand tool which just allows you to move your way around the canvas like this 
I've never really used this personally. I just use these on the side. Uh, but yeah, you can use it for that. So those are our main tools that we see on the bar down here. Below these, I don't really mess with any of these, but these two, the ones that I call the palettes, these are basically the colors that, you, that you're working with currently. The foreground one is of course, the one at the front, the top left, and that will be the one that you see displayed. If you have anything with secondary colors, so whether it be a brush, whether it be a gradient, the background color will come into play. Okay, so you can switch those at any point, like so. But there are certain brushes which have two colors. So say for example, if I just take a brush uh, or modify the current brush that I'm using so that it has um, two colors. So if I do color dynamics, foreground and background jitter, put that on. As you can see, we've now got two colors coming through there, the foreground and the background. All right, so it's all about messing with this stuff, playing with it, checking on some tutorials and seeing exactly how these things work and how you can get them to work for you to speed up your process, to do things that, you know, will make your work look even better. But yeah, those are the tools that you have here on Photoshop. Hopefully you found this video useful, just understanding what exactly all those things stand for and understanding what you, the beginnings of what you can do with those. Um, and that's all for today. So thanks for listening. If you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe for more um, great videos on art, Photoshop, um, and other qualifications such as GCC's A-levels and university. And be sure to drop a like and a comment if you're interested as well. So right now, this will be some videos appearing on screen, uh, which will lead you to other really good videos. And that's all for now until next time.